there's a vacuum right now in Gen Z where they are looking for spirituality. They are looking for that stability, for that tradition, that connection. I think we can offer it. We just have to approach it right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Poor, the place where faith and culture are served together. My name is Father Christian, and today on this episode, we have a real, live, breathing Gen Zer. His name is Danny Pettit. Hey! Thank he you. is a gamer. He is an Uber driver. He is a DoorDash driver. Uh, most importantly, you are the person we're going to objectify today from the Gen Z generation. Perfect. Yeah. It is the tradition for us to uh, crack open a drink. So I purchased today Bay. It's Wonder Water for you to wonder about your water. Can you not have alcohol on the show? Oh, I don't think you saw the last episode, buddy. I, mean, I saw Brandon brought in alcohol, but I mean, like, you didn't. Are you, um, not, are you, are you not allowed to drink on the job? Correct. Your boss did. Oh, you're talking about Jesus? Yes, the big right. boss. I'll pass that by the HR committee. <laughs> I brought this, you know, because Gen Zers seem to have a fresh take on the world. You guys want to save the world. Good for the health. Okay. To Gen Z. So that does not taste bad, but it kind of smells like toilet water. I don't think we're going to get sponsored by them after that comment. But <laughs> you're going to have some more toilet water? It doesn't taste bad. It just smells weird. It's like a, a toilet funny, that yeah. got cleaned by some 99-cent store. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about that. Your generation is the most studied generation right now in the church. Everyone is saying you guys are fleeing, just <clears> running <throat> away from the church, or don't even care about the church. And you, my friend, happen to be an outlier um, because you actually go to church. Yes, I do. Pretty pretty regularly. You're not there all the time, so you don't see me, but I'm, I'm, there, I'm there a lot. Why is Gen Z the big generation that's fleeing from the church? I think there's a lot of reasons. Chief of those, the church doesn't have a great track record of uh, being honest, open. I mean, the church is supposed to be a representative of the kingdom of heaven here on earth, and I feel like for 2,000 years, it's been anything but that. This is this is gonna be a great interview. There's been some good things that have happened with the church. Of course, the church has done a lot of good things, but we've also caused a lot of wars. We've also killed a lot of people, but even the Episcopal Church, you know, don't talk about what we did to the Catholics in England and Ireland. You know, even with the modern evangelical movement in America, there's still this kind of judgmentalism or uh, aggression or anger. I think the problem isn't that people are leaving the church, they just don't trust it anymore. I was, I was in a similar boat until I found here, so I completely get it. There's stuff that happened in England. Can we just leave that with the Church of England? I mean, the Episcopal Church yeah, you're wasn't right. we're, really we're, there. You, yeah, you're right. Know, We've so. never done anything bad. No! <laughs> Slavery, cough <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> one of the big traits of a Gen Z folk is truth. The big three that comes truth, safety, authenticity. Huh. You're the first generation that was totally plugged in digitally 24 hours. So when things went down in the world, you you saw it immediately. But that truth part, I mean, you just rattled off some, some truth. How would you begin to build trust again with just your generation. Confronting the wrongs that we've done in the past. And I think that's one of the things the Episcopal Church is really good at. It's very powerful to say, hey, we acknowledge all the bad stuff we've done in the past and you know, we're trying to move forward. We're humans too. We're trying to, once again, emulate the kingdom of God here on earth. The Episcopal Church has really definitely with our involvement with slavery in the past, mm. there's a lot of more work to be done, but have tried to not only just talk about it, but change our structure and our leadership to reflect all of humanity, yeah. which I think is a big key. But there's still a lot of work to, to be done. If you were in a position of leadership within the church, what would be one big change you would make? Evangelism. The church is really bad about connecting with people where they are. It's because for so much of our history specifically as the mainline Protestant denominations, we've just had people come to us. And it's been very cultural. It's been very much, oh yeah, if, if you, your church is in your area, you're just gonna go there. And it's been generational, you've had big families, so families have gone. That's not the case anymore. The question really is gonna be, how can we connect with people and actually get them in our doors? And you've actually preached on this. You've said people don't have an issue with Jesus. The old Jesus dude is pretty cool. It's the church they tend to have a problem with. I've noticed even that among my friends and people that are my age, is that they're not not religious. They're not atheistic. They believe there's something out there, but the way the church has put the idea of God in their heads, or the idea of Jesus in their heads, and the way we haven't explained why we do things, it pushes people away. And there's a vacuum right now in Gen Z where they are looking for spirituality. They are looking for that stability, for that tradition, that connection. I think we can offer it. We just have to approach it right. People actually have to know about us to get in the doors. Do you think you have grown your beard to attract people to the church? Oh, 100%. You don't have to look like him. You just have to act like him. What is the church doing really well right now to meet the needs of Gen Z? I think we're actually doing everything very well. 
It's just people don't know about us, especially the Episcopal Church. We have created a very open and loving space. I've been to many Episcopal churches around the country. The one thing that I've found that it's common in every single Episcopal church I've walked into is it is incredibly open and welcoming and loving. I've been to plenty of other churches where I have not felt right walking through the door, where I felt judged, where I did not feel like it was my home. And the Episcopal Church, I have never once felt like that. See, if you hit his affiliate link, every person who signs up to become an Episcopalian, he gets 10% of your tithe. I've always thought that too, that the Episcopal Church is the best kept secret yeah. in the mainline churches. Because we have this wonderful blend of all the, the history, the liturgy, the sacraments, yes. and then you bring in all this Protestant theology, and then it makes it that we open the conversation to, let's just have the big conversations and look for the via media, that we oh, look yeah. at tradition, we look at scripture, um, and you look at reason. I wanted to talk about that. Uh-oh, here that's, it comes. That's a yes. I think this would go under truth again. You are a big truther. Talking about one of the main things that I think a lot of people that are my age have, that the issues they have with religion in general, is a lot of it is very much like, we just don't talk about that. And I've heard over and over and over again from people in my generation that they've gone to Bible studies and they've asked questions and they've been asked to not come back because they ask too many hard questions. And I've heard, you, I've, I've heard that a lot. Whenever you and I had our first meeting years ago, it's not that bad. Is it real coconut? Do you buy anything normal for this show? Did our you, budget is broker than you. Yeah, you could buy like a pack of Diet Coke and I would have been happy. We're so broke, we're using this camera that doesn't even work anymore. Have you seen one of these? No. This is called a camera you would actually, I think, put in a tape. Do you know what a tape is? Yes, I know what a tape is. This is our very first camera we ever had um, here at the church. Like our first dollar that we put up on the wall. You were talking about uh, Barbie and Barbie? Uh, you're not Knuff. No, Dude, I'm so connected. Tom, what were we talking about? Reason, reason. Putting the camera yes. in sleep. That's I've never lie. seen you yap this much before, actually. That is a lie. This we is not true. Because you are starting digital community. <laughs> you have a YouTube video of our church that he yes. built in Minecraft? Yeah. Yes, Minecraft. My dream for this guy is that he's gonna actually be a digital missionary and be out in these places because aren't there Gen Zers oh, yeah. and maybe Gen Alpha who's like, yeah. have an avatar well, walk around and well, do well, community. Well, that's my biggest, uh, honestly, community within the Episcopal Church. I mean, besides here, obviously, but I'm in an online group called Worm Church of about 254. You guys call yourself the Worms? Yes. Oh, because you dig beneath the ground? Well, initially it started as, uh, it was just young Episcopalians. <laughs> it reminded me of your one-man show, I'm having flashbacks. Oh, yeah. The first time I ever met this guy, at a diner and talked about the Episcopal Church is the first time I've heard a man of the cloth cuss. Dude, why you gotta out me like that? You were out what if, my, what if my bishop is watching? Oh my God, I got off topic again. You're, you like that you can use your reason, you can use your head. Cause I you like, can go to Bible studies and bring up hard questions and no one's gonna be like, dude, can you please leave? Yeah. Being able to say, God gave me a brain and I can use it along with the scripture, along mm -hmm. with the tradition. That's powerful to me. We have um, top Gen Z jokes that we're gonna try and Danny. We're gonna go through thumbs up or thumbs down. Why did the Gen Zer bring a selfie stick to the job interview? Why? They heard it helps to stick out. <laughs> Get back. Why can't Gen Zers play hide and seek? Why? Because good luck hiding when you're always online. <laughs> How does a Gen Zer order their coffee? How? Can I get a little bit of coffee with my almond milk? <laughs> why are Gen Zers confused about cryptocurrency? Oh my god, why? Because virtual money still can't buy happiness. Okay, I actually like that one. That why did the Gen Z delete to their social media? Why? To meet new people like themselves. And then finally, the last question we always ask is, where will the church be in 25 years? I think the church is going to be alive because, you know, our God defeated death. I think we're going to have to consolidate. I think your neighborhood church is basically out the window. We're going to have to have smaller, bigger churches. We can't, we can't sustain it. We can't keep it up anymore. Thank you, friend. Cheers to you. God bless you. Toilet water. See you in the next one. Hey, Christian, what do you call a guest on the show? A poron. A poron? A pour on. What am I missing? The pour on? Uh, the pour. Yeah, the pour, but the pour. Yeah, the pour on. You're a pour on. You're a pour on. Oh!